This is a 38-year-old woman who presented to the emergency room with massive hemoptysis. Massive hemoptysis is defined as hemoptysis of 250 to 500 cc's in a 24-hour period. Massive hemoptysis is caused by either the bronchial artery, which is the cause in approximately 95% of cases, or the pulmonary artery, the other 5%. Bronchial artery causes include cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, sarcoid, TB, aspergillosis, and bronchogenic carcinoma. Pulmonary artery causes include pulmonary embolism and AVMs. A CT scan was performed on this patient that revealed diffuse disease throughout both lung fields with cystic changes throughout both lung fields consistent with her diagnosis of recent and long-standing cystic fibrosis. Bronchoscopy was not performed as traditionally pulmonary physicians will tell you there is too much blood within the tracheal bronchial tree to identify a location of bleeding. The patient was brought to the interventional radiology suite and the right bronchial artery was examined. Please be aware that bronchial artery anatomy is quite variable. Traditionally, there are two on the left side and one on the right. However, two on the right, one on the left, one on each, a combined trunk feeding both the left and the right lung, as well as combined bronchial artery intercostal trunks are very common. Please be aware that patients do not bleed from the main artery, but bleed from the small irregular vessels seen in the periphery here. In addition, patients do not exsanguinate, but rather aspirate and die from asphyxiation rather than exsanguination. This catheter was advanced distally, and as you can see, there is collateralization from the bronchial artery branches to the large pulmonary vein in the center of the field. These were then embolized using biospheres measuring 5 to 700 microns in size. This size is utilized because the collaterals from the bronchial artery to the pulmonary vein measure approximately 250 microns in size. After the completion of this vessel, with embolization with the biospheres, several small coils were placed and then repeat arteriography was obtained and you can see that there are intercostals visualized at this point. We did not see a spinal artery which does occur in up to 5% of cases off of the bronchial artery. Please note that this intercostal artery then provides flow to a branch of the subclavian which then feeds into the external carotid artery and was not followed further above the jaw. In addition to this, the left side was then examined and embolized in the same manner using the same size biospheres and coils. At the completion of my initial study on all of these patients, after they had their bronchial arteries and intercostals embolized, both internal mammaries are visualized and embolized if appropriate. Several coils were placed in the left internal mammary artery to prevent inadvertent embolization via collaterals down to the feet and then small particles were placed and then finally the same thing was done on the right side. Please be aware that it was noted that the endotracheal tube was down the right main stem bronchus and was eventually pulled back at the completion of the study. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact me at tpmmd at hotmail.com. Thank you for your attention.